If you're looking to sell a home, there's certain questions that you need to ask your real estate agent when you're interviewing many to make sure that you pick the perfect one. Also, in turn, on the other side of things, if you are a real estate agent, there's certain questions that you need to be able to effectively answer in order to make sure that you're giving the best service possible to your seller. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the top 12 questions as a seller that you need to be asking your real estate agent when interviewing them to make sure that you pick the right one. What's up, everyone? My name is Mike Sherrard. Thank you so much for tuning in, as always. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. If you do get value from this video, please make sure you subscribe and lightly tap that notification bell so you don't miss another video. As mentioned in the introduction, in this video, I want to talk to you about the top 12 questions that you should be asking a real estate agent in order to make sure that you pick the right one. You see, there's a lot of misconceptions about a listing agent. And what we need to understand is that a buyer's agent is very different from a listing agent. There's many people that are amazing at helping people buy a home, but they don't have the right expertise to get the most money in less time for your home in an efficient manner. So what I wanna do with this video is make sure that when you're interviewing multiple real estate agents, agents that you're asking the right questions and you're asking questions that are going to keep an agent on their toes. And again, on the other side of things, if you are a real estate agent watching this video, you need to be able to answer these questions to the best of your ability to make sure that you are going to be the right fit for a seller and make sure that you're going to be able to service them and get the job done for them in the best manner possible. So without further ado, let's talk about the top 12 questions you need to be asking any real estate agent when going to sell a home. Now, the first one is is what percentage of their business is listings. Again, going back to what I mentioned a couple seconds ago, is that there's a lot of people that can work with buyers, but if they haven't sold many homes, there's a lot of troubles that they might run into when trying to get your home sold for the most money in less time. There's a lot of people that can drive around and show the right properties. There's a lot of people that can negotiate properly, but there's not a lot of people that are extremely strong at marketing. And if one of the real estate agents doesn't have the right quality of marketing, they don't know how to get the most exposure on your property and they don't have a large percentage of listings that they're confident and comfortable with servicing, they might not be the best agent for you. And what I mean by that is that if they're busy constantly going out and showing homes for other clients, then they might not have the right amount of time to service your listing, do open houses on weekends when they otherwise might have to go show properties and other things like that. So make sure that the first question you ask is what percentage of listings do they actually have? Now on the same note, number two is you want to ask how how many listings do they currently have? There's a couple ways to go about this. The first way to look at it is if they have a number of listings, that means that they are comfortable with being a listing agent and they have managed to get other listings on the market. The other way to look at it is if they have too many listings, sometimes they might not have the right amount of time to service your property. So you want to make sure that you ask them how many listings that they have, but you also want to make sure that you ask them if they can also service yours and allocate the right amount of time because if they're too busy, to service your listing because they've got all these other listings and nobody wants this, but some agents do put a bigger priority on higher price listings. So if you're in a lower or medium price bracket and they've got a lot of listings that are in the upper price bracket, then we want to make sure that they're still going to have the right amount of time to allocate it to your listing regardless of the price. The third question we want to ask is how many properties have they sold this year. Not how many have they listed this year, but how many properties has the real estate agent sold? You know, up here in Calgary, at least, we've got a five-year ongoing recession. So a lot of agents struggle with selling properties because they sit on the market, they go through multiple price reductions, and they end up getting expired or they get terminated by the seller because they're unhappy with the performance. So the bigger question is not how many properties they have listed throughout the entire year. The better question is how many listings have they sold this year because then it's a performance-based statistic on them actually getting the job done. Number four is one of the toughest questions that many are going to struggle with and it's gonna keep them on their toes undoubtedly is how many of their listings have expired. Because again, going back to what I was talking to you about in terms of a large majority of properties expiring or being terminated in a tougher market, if a listing agent has listed 20 homes and they sold three 
but 17 of them expired or terminated, that's not very good. You know, when you just ask how many properties they've listed and they say 20, that sounds amazing, that's great. They sold a couple, okay, you know, there's some performance-based stats there, they got the job done. But if the majority of them or a good portion of them have actually expired or terminated, that might raise some red flags as to what are they doing wrong? Are they not marketing it properly? Are they overpricing the property? Are they having deals fall through because they're not negotiating properly? There's a number of different things to take into account. If somebody's listing a large number of properties, but they're not actually selling the majority of them, they're actually ending up expiring or terminating. So you want to ask that question. It's going to keep an agent on his toes. And oftentimes you're going to see they're going to struggle with that question because they don't want to answer it. So many real estate agents only focus on the positives, which is when they've sold the property, how many properties they've sold, list the sales price, if it's strong, days on market. But not many people ask them how many properties have actually expired that they've listed because it's not something they like to put focus on. But for you as a seller, that's an exceptionally and incredibly important question to ask because you just don't want to be a listing stat. You want to be a sold stat. And if you become a listing stat, but primarily the majority of their business is expiring, that's going to leave you shorthanded. So you want to make sure that you ask how many listings have they had that have not sold over the last year. Number five, going again with performance-based statistics, you wanna ask what is the average days on market for properties? Because again, it's important to understand that here at least in Calgary, the average days on market, depending on again, if it's a detached, attached, or apartment, usually it's about 63 days. Now, if you've got an agent where they're selling a couple homes, but the average days on market is maybe closer to 100 for a number of different reasons, you might wanna be mindful of the fact that there could be a couple things holding them back from getting the job done. I know a lot of people that either have to move because of job situations or you know relocation based on family, and if you've got a timeline, but the average agent's days on market are exceeding your timeline, it might again raise a couple flags that you want to be mindful of in order to make sure that you are gonna reach the timeline that you're hoping for so that the process goes smooth and you have your expectations met. Now number six, staying on the topic of performance-based statistics, you also wanna ask what their average list to sales price is. This is something that any listing agent should be able to rhyme off at any given time and it's another important number because again, the average list to sales price for a number of properties in Calgary is usually about 97%, but you wanna make sure that you're getting the most amount of money for your property in the least amount of time. So you wanna make sure that the listing agent's average list to sales price is closer to that 98 or 99, which means that they're pricing the property properly from day one. And also something that I want you to ask in regards to the list to sales price is not the list to sales price on what it was listed for when it sold. You want to ask what the list to sales price was when it was initially listed and what is the difference there? You could have a property that started out at 550000 and if it reduced down to 520000 and it sold for 510000 the list to sales price would be quite strong but they started at 550,000. So you wanna ask what is the list to sales price based on the initial list price? Because that's gonna give you an idea if there's a trend of multiple price reductions or sitting on the market or anything like that. Because again, you wanna make sure that you're pricing properly from day one, because usually if you price properly from day one, you get the most amount of money for your property. It's not undercutting it, it's not underselling it, it's not getting you less money. You want to price properly because usually within the first 30 days, that's when you're going to get the most amount of money for your property. And if for whatever reason your property is priced slightly lower than the market says it is, that's when you run into multiple offers, which is a great thing, which is competing offers where you can try and get them to go up and up and up and over the list price. So again, you're not going to run into a situation that's going to come as a negative from pricing it properly from day one. Number seven is asking the agent if they've sold a property in your area. Every single city has multiple different areas within it and each different area has different types of properties, different demographics, different styles of homes. There's so many different variables that you need to take into account. For example, up here in Calgary, we're split into four quadrants and even within those four quadrants, there's vastly different niches within each pocket of communities. So you wanna make sure that you're asking a listing agent if they've sold a home recently in your area. Let's look at my area, for example. If you're looking in the southeast quadrant of Calgary, for example, you've got properties in the upper 
newer Southies that are more entry-level homes in the sort of $300,000 to $400,000 range, but you've got homes in the lower Southeast that are in lake communities that are you know upwards of million-dollar homes. So if you have an agent that primarily specializes and sells homes in the upper Southeast, they might not be as comfortable with the lower Southeast. So again, it's important to ask if they've done business in your area just so that they know they're familiar about the different selling points, the benefits of living in that community. So when somebody, a prospective buyer, shows interest in your home, they're able to properly educate that buyer and show why living in your community and specifically your home is going to be a fantastic lifestyle for them. And that all comes from doing business within your community. So it's important to ask them if they've done business recently in your area. Number eight, going back to marketing, do you do professional photos and not do you personally do them? Do you hire a professional photographer? This is a mistake I see so often where a listing agent will tell somebody that they do professional photos, but all they're actually telling you is that they're going to use a camera like I'm recording this with, a DSLR, and they're going to go take the photos themselves. That is not a professional photo and you will easily be able to tell the difference. A home is usually the biggest investment investment in someone's life and you want to make sure that when you're going to sell it that you're representing it to the best of your ability and that comes with making sure that the marketing is a proper reflection of your initial investment so you want to make sure that you ask the listing agent if they hire a professional photographer in order to do the photography, whether they do twilight, whether they do drone photos, anything like that, but you wanna make sure that your property is properly represented to the best of its ability, and that comes with doing professional photos by somebody that that is their full-time job. We are full-time real estate agents. Our job is to sell a house. Our job isn't to take photos of the house. There's other people out there that do that all day, every day, and they know the exact angles, they know how to highlight the property the best, they know how to make it look absolutely fantastic, and that's how you want your home to be represented. So you wanna make sure that you're asking if they hire out professional photos for your home so that the marketing and the initial photos look fantastic. We all know, statistically speaking, that a buyer online only looks on average at the first three photos. So if the first three photos don't look that good, even though your property could be the perfect fit, it could look gorgeous on the inside, it could be an absolutely beautiful property that's well maintained, if it doesn't show like that in the photos, your property is actually going to be skipped by potential buyers and that's not what you want. You want them to be going down and looking at all the photos and inquiring about a showing and showing interest in it because that's what you deserve. So make sure you ask if they're taking professional photos. Number nine is, again, on the lines of marketing, is where will their property be featured? Us at Redline, we've got one of the largest global syndications of online property websites in the world. Your property will be featured on every single website humanly possible in regards to real estate. So no matter where anybody is looking and where they're located, your property will show up. And you want to make sure that your property is getting that kind of exposure when you're listing so that if somebody's on a website that's not in Calgary, they're still seeing your property if they're interested in moving here. You want to make sure that if they're in Canada as well, they're looking on the Canadian websites. You want to make sure that your property is being featured everywhere possible so that no matter where somebody's looking online for homes, if they're looking to move to Calgary or if they're in Calgary looking on a website that's not that popular for whatever reason, you want to make sure that your property is still showing up. So make sure you ask where your property is going to be featured. Number 10, in terms of the marketing, is what is your marketing strategy? For me personally, I specialize in marketing. I coach agents around the world about how to market homes and get it sold for more money in less time. So I'm strong at that and that's one of my fortes is being able to show people that my marketing strategy using social media marketing and online digital strategies, I will get your home in front of thousands of people per day more than just the standard property websites that people are thinking about like realtor.com and other Calgary websites. So again, you wanna make sure you understand Understand their marketing strategy to make sure because here's the thing there's always buyers out there that aren't actively looking or aren't working with a realtor and what's happened with me a number of different times is that 
my social media marketing got in front of a buyer that wasn't looking on any websites for a property, but because my property that I had listed was a good fit for them, and it was a great opportunity because it was something that they would have loved, they actually went ahead and purchased the property, but they weren't looking on any websites. So you want to make sure you ask your listing agent during the interview, what is their marketing strategy to make sure that you're covering all the bases and making sure that you're getting in front of people, even if they're not actively looking for a property. On that same note, you want to make sure that you ask if they're using social media. Yes, there's other digital avenues that work very well, but social media is very relevant right now. And a lot of people are spending the majority of their day on social media. So you want to make sure that your property is getting in front of those people where their attention is. And that comes by way of leveraging social media marketing. So ask them if they're doing Facebook ads. And number 12, finally, is what is their communication and feedback strategy? One of the most common pieces of feedback that I get from any home seller that didn't sell their home with a different agent and decided to work with me, I asked them what went wrong with the other agent. And one of the most common pieces of feedback that I get is that there was no communication. They listed it and kind of fell off the map or there were showings, but there was no feedback. You want to make sure that your listing agent is giving you feedback after every single showing. I'm going to tell you in complete honesty that almost no agents, including myself, provide readily feedback after a showing because we're busy showing other properties. So I have to do is I have to go call the agents, email the agents, text the agents in order to make sure that regardless of if they provide feedback or not, I get it for you. And you want to make sure that there's constant communication after an open house, how the marketing is going. If there's any positive feedback, good, bad, even the bad, the bad feedback's more helpful than the good feedback. Because if there's anything negative that's constantly coming up, you want to make sure that you can address that and change it so it doesn't hurt future showings. But a lot of agents are afraid of providing bad feedback because they think it might offend the seller, but it's actually doing even worse. It's hurting the listing and stopping you from getting the job done. So those are the top 12 questions that you should be asking any real estate agent when you're interviewing them. And this is going to help you qualify them to make sure that they're the best fit for you. Also, if you're a real estate agent watching this, these are questions that you should be able to answer with confidence to help make sure that you are going to properly service your seller and get the job done. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, if you have any more questions, please comment below. Otherwise, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and we will see you in the next video.